holy smokes, it ain't no joke, guys. Everybody's bricked up in the Call of Duty community. Everybody's shaking. Everybody's doing helicopters out there. And Sekis are generally very, very happy because apparently they ended Microsoft, per se. They ended segregation. They ended segregation, right? Like, the, the beta is going to be coming on PlayStation. It's going to be coming on Xbox. All Day one for everybody. And generally speaking, no one is looking like this, okay? Every, uh, I got a clip that I'm going to share with you guys. We got some beta leaks. We got a beta gameplay stuff and information to talk about. But generally speaking, the Call of Duty community is not looking like this. It's going to be looking like this when the game comes out. But so far, everybody's looking like this. But there's only one thing where, uh, you know, the community is uh, kind of riled up. So let me bring it back real quick, okay? Because apparently the homie came out. First of all, man, somebody give me that baby oil real quick, man. I want to splash that baby oil. I want to go thumb thumb on his forehead and find out, like, what is wrong with these suckers out here, man? Like the video if you just want a good game. Dislike the video if not. And specifically, like the video if you want the score streaks looping. Because this sucker said that we don't want the score streaks looping. And he thinks that people don't want it. Check this out first of all, roll it. We're going back to just a traditional score streak system. Score will reset on death. Right now, score streaks do not loop. Um, that, that was something we've talked about. Yo, she was laughing though. She was laughing. She's laughing at your retwetness, bro. Score streaks do not loop. Um, that, that was something we've talked about quite a bit. And really the goal there is we want to reward players in a single life fairly with high-end rewards or low-end depending on your selection but we really want to avoid score streak spam mm -hmm. um that's something i personally just really don't like i know a lot of players don't don't like it um, we're going yeah so he's saying i don't like and then quickly says that people don't like it come on man we love it though like the video if you love that and you want to see that and the community went crazy right because yeah everybody's like bricked up right now for this game and then this bozo comes out and says that nah bro i don't like it oh shit my bad guys my bad people don't like it you guys don't like it right then the homie bremen bremen yeah. the homie bremen comes out says that my bad nobody cares about your personal opinion yo ask the consumer what they want yo it's millions of people around the world lol so yeah amen to that and right now let's actually check out what uh drifter is saying Roll it. number one want my number one desire for this beta as i've said before in other videos is i want smooth functional omni movement i want this game and really any fps game that i play to have great fundamentals you're going to hear this two more times from me over the next week as uh -huh. i release reviews of concord and ascendant where i talk about the fundamentals of an fps game but every fps oh, game concord is done for man concord is done for like they went so, so retweet mode like yeah they went ultra well good that nobody's liking that game, game that so. i play at least needs to be fundamentally good smooth fluid have a fun combat loop kind of makes sense okay. and one of the most important aspects of this is making sure that the movement system is fluid and that the movement system makes sense within the context of the game. So for Black Ops 6, I just want Omni movement to be good. Well, I mean, we're getting it. I'm not going to say I don't oh. want it or boots on the ground. Or th I, I mean, like, these are like five, six ones uh, right there. It's going to be really hard for them, bro. It's going to be really, really hard, bro. Like, you want Omni movement. You want it to be good, right? You want to be shocked by it. You want to be surprised by it. You want to enjoy that game. And what else he said, right? Like, yeah, these are like multiple wants, bro. The damn homie. Throw it away. Thank just you. whatever they're serving up, I want it to be a great dish. For Black Ops 6, okay. I want it to be like when I go to a fancy restaurant and I tell the waiter to surprise me and they bring me something absolutely delicious. Just please let it work as intended because it. I mean, if you want Activision to surprise you, I mean, they already had us in the first half of that. <laughs> They already have surprised us with the friendly UAV online, man. They cannot surprise us even more. That's a real operator, by the way, guys. Yeah, that's a real operator. Yes, yeah, some suckers have, like, toyed around maybe a little bit too much. But the real operator still has, like, the, the, the BBC online. So it's a real operator. This is something that they surprised a lot of people with uh, back in the Modern Warfare 2020, uh, 2022. Uh, and, and this time, if they, they want to surprise us, they're going to be asking for the tip, man. And when I say the tip, bruh, like, 
like they're gonna be they would want you to spend all that cash on their microtransactions ass bro like that's what they it is want. the biggest new feature added to the game the biggest departure from the standard tried and true call of duty formula since we had wall running and jetpacks and i genuinely think a large portion of how well black ops 6 performs as a game over its entire life cycle yep. is riding on how well the omni movement system is implemented so i'm genuinely hoping that it's good and i'm hoping that all the haters out there and all those other youtube videos are just wrong on top of this, I also hope that the new predictive movement and auto mantle system works really well because as a guy with weak and kind of screwed up hands, it really would be nice to have something that helps me cut back on the amount of buttons I have to press and spam for advanced movement in, well, really any game, much less Call of Duty. So I'm really hoping that auto mantle system is nice. Moving along, I want to talk about weapons. And we're going to start with weapons in the... Okay, if this was... <laughs> Pump the brakes, right? If this was somebody else, I would be kind of like clowning a little bit. I would be joking, not necessarily like attacking the person. But in the case of Drifter... I'll just be like, uh, I'll give him a pass because uh, he has some real issues, uh, personal health issues. He never really, I believe he disclosed it. I, I don't know much about it. All I know is that he's uh, he has some disability issues, so not going to joke around it. And okay, in the case of him and people that have these issues, yeah, it's a really good feature. But if somebody who's not disabled and if they were to say that, bro, like, I don't want to, I don't want to press these buttons, bro, I would be laughing, bro. Like, come on now, man. But in the case of Drifter, makes sense, brother, makes sense generic get, section get, of uh, get well soon man get well soon i hope predictable you recoil number one thing i want for weapons in the game is for them to have predictable recoil because call of duty has this sort of on and off again relationship with random recoil or random recoil within certain bounds where sometimes mm. your gun kicks a lot sometimes it kicks a little but there's this sort of tolerance range in there yeah. and i feel that this that's like the uh eomm2 brother that's the that's eomm2 fellers but it's very, very hard to say whether it's just the EOMM or SBMM alone, or they have designed the game in that way where, you know, they want to make it natural. So sometimes when you go like, pop, 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 it goes this way. Other times, pop, 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 you go on the other side, right? Like, maybe they have designed the game in that way as well. Uh, or maybe it's the EOMM. I think it's a little bit of both because, but, but... EOMM also has a, it, it's like, its job is to get you to the microtransactions shop, right? Then you also have skill-based mentoring that makes sure that you're playing against the same level field. And then there's another one, right? Which I don't know the name of, but it was mentioned in the pattern that in-game, like live in-game, if they see you doing too good, they can nerf you in real time. So they have some real-time mumbo-jumbo in the game as well, uh, that if you're like killing it, they, they can actually nerf you in real time, make it so sometimes your shots are not registering. Guys, it's like, it's not a rumor, man. Y you know, you have been playing these games and sometimes, yeah, sometimes it might be a glitch. Sometimes it might be connection. Sometimes it might be a bug. Sometimes it might be placebo. Sometimes it would be a little bit off. But come on now, man. Like five times, ten times, twenty times over, a hundred times over. Come on, man. Like, it, it, they, they got like some real crap into this game, bro system often leads to a lot of unpredictability and makes my gunfights feel wonky sometimes. What random or large amounts of flinch don't help either, we could deal without that. But I would be much happier if Call of Duty implemented a more Valorant or Counter-Strike style recoil system that is extremely predictable, even if it's 100% predictable. Uh, is that good? Is that a good thing? I never played Valorant. Predictable. I'll go with that. Let me know. I don't Let want the Valorant or Counter-Strike style bizarre crosshairs where your crosshairs are like here, but your bullets are coming out up here. I don't want that. Okay. But I do want the idea that every time I pull the trigger and I cycle through my 30 five round magazine that each one of those has a predictable amount of recoil obviously you know changing if i'm strafing or walking or diving or something but predictability because for me if the recoil is predictable that means my gunfights are fair and it's worth my time to play the game and master oh, the recoil okay. of whatever particular weapon it is that i like best moving okay. along from okay. this i would okay. also prefer classic weapons with limited attachments so mm. in terms of available weapons i mostly want them to come from the 90s just a lot of era authentic weapons ideally with their real names and not some goofy uh. off-brand yeah, no, I, I agree with him. Like, I, I feel like a lot of people would agree as well. If you agree, like the video. Dislike if you disagree. I want to know where you guys are. Nah, I, I, I would want that, but the reason I'm... You, you know what I mean? Like, they're not going to do it, bro. Like, that's just too much money, man. They would have to get licensing. They would have to pay them. And Activision paying money? Nah, that's a no-no, man. They want your money. They want you paying them. They want you buying the, you know, a a a friendly 
they, they want you buying the microtransactions, okay? They don't want to be spending money on making the game as good as possible. They want to spend the money, but not too much money to make it uh, as good as possible. They want to make sure they, like, simmer down a little bit. And they're, uh, of course, they're very tranquilo with it, too, so, yay. Todd name that they put in there just to avoid just to avoid trademark infringement. Probably They're not going to get that because they're probably not going to pay for all those guns. And I that know that it's well. Black Ops. Okay, we've already got like a poison bomb knife thing and gadgets, and there's some prototype weapons. I'm totally fine with that. Crazy gadgets, crazy prototypes. I'm here for it with Black Ops. But for the bulk of the weapons for the game, I would like it for it to be a standard MP5N, Desert Eagle, M4A1, Spaz Shotgun, Uzi, Steyr Aug. You know, all the classic '90s weapons that you would think of showing up in a movie like, say, Die Hard or Die Hard with a Vengeance or Die Hard 2. We have a lot of Die Hards here. I think Die Hard 2 is Die Harder. And then, man, after Samuel L. Jackson left that series, that series just completely went off a cliff after yeah. uh, Die Hard with a Vengeance. So. I, I never seen like any of the newer ones, but I remember Die Hard 1 was amazing. Die Hard 2, probably have seen it, but don't remember from the top of my head. I remember, I believe it was Die Hard 3, where, you know, uh, towards the end, they, they take like the Hydra jet. I believe that's what it was. Yo, that was crazy, though. Uh, but yeah, like, uh, to be honest, I feel like that you're asking too much from Activision, actually. I don't know if they can do that, bro. I don't know. I, yeah, I don't know if they can do that. He's asking way too much, though. Way too much, man. Way too much. So, but anyway, classic 90s weapons, that's what I want. Uh, honestly, that's kind of the era that my brain is most stuck in. So, not video game drifter analyzing weapons, but real life drifter and his knowledge of weapons and how they function oh, and awesome. my experience shooting them. I have the most experience with 90s style military weapons because of the ones that are available to rent around here, so I understand those better. I'm actually getting so old now that I'm starting to. Ah, uh, meanwhile in Canada, bro. <laughs> meanwhile in Canada. <laughs> Meanwhile in Canada, pub. <laughs> you know, meanwhile in Canada, you go out with the airsoft, you get arrested. Actual real story, by the way, a real story. Like, uh, I, I had some of my airsoft confiscated as a kid because, like, I went out with my friends. Uh, if you go back on this channel and you watch some of the first few videos, I uploaded those videos on another channel that I had, like, that's like a decade ago, right? Would mount a GoPro on top of my head. Uh, Freddy W. Smosh, if you have been around that era of YouTube, you know who I'm talking about. They would have, they would, I was inspired off of Freddy W. Put a GoPro here, go and re record it. I uploaded, those are my very first videos on this channel specifically, but I had them on a different channel. Uh, you know, I took that out from that channel, uploaded here, and then got into gaming because uh, I actually was, uh, you know what I'm saying? Like, as a kid, they confiscated. They saw us, like, playing with the airsoft, and they were like, nah, boo-boo, we taking the air. Yeah, like, confiscated. They confiscated that shit, bro. Like, yeah, so now I just have this only, and uh, I don't go out with that, man. I don't go out with that, bro. I don't go out with that, man. So Lose track of what type of light arms that modern armies are fighting with. I am actually starting to kind of fall behind on that one. And the second part of this section is that I think I would be happier with less overall attachments. Modern Warfare 2 and especially Modern Warfare 3 were extremely overwhelming for me. There were so many attachments and so many aftermarket parts that honestly a lot of them started to run together, even for me, the stats guy. You would think the stats guy would be in love with this plethora of attachments and options and we had weapons. Uh, no, personally, I would want more attachments. My, my thing, my issue with it is that we're getting so many attachments, but it's like they don't do too much of a difference it's not not they don't make a too big of a difference though you know because everything has so much negative and so much uh pros so when you add so much of the pro and so much of the cons it just becomes like a nothing burger essentially and uh you're like okay i'm just better off not having too many attachments so i can run faster aim faster reload faster because the more you add the the less you you feel what i'm saying I, I feel like that they really need to make sure that when you're adding attachments it makes your weapons better y yeah make it op bro because if every weapon is op with attachments then everybody's gonna have access to it uh, and yeah we're gonna be on the same playing field and, and all that right if uh, because that that uh, that's how it was back in the days i would like the pick 10 system honestly from black ops 3 i think that was better we didn't have to worry about too much too much about uh you attaching too many attachments and it negatively affecting the weapon right yeah you guys uh you guys with me on this one or yeah or nay yeah or nay let, let me know in the chat let me know in the chat tuning and modern warfare 2 and stuff like that but 
for game design, sometimes I believe you can have too many choices, and when you have too many choices, you have no meaningful choices at all. Because I would enjoy having a handful of unique and distinct attachments that make meaningful changes to the weapons, rather than hundreds or thousands of little attachments that make changes so small they're difficult to notice. Okay. And no stupid weapon tweaking thing either. I don't think we're getting that back, I don't want that back. And part of this has to do with the fact that with all of my illnesses and boo-boos, I just don't get to game as much anymore, and I really genuinely oh, dislike yeah. games that have a grinding aspect to them, which brings me to the next section. I would be very happy if Black Ops 6 were less grindy in general. That's a wish that I'm almost certainly not going to get, because COD has increased the grind for every single game for the last 15 years. Uh, on this one, do you guys want the games to be more grindy or less grindy? Uh, I also barely get time to play games nowadays, but that's not uh, because uh, I have disability issues or anything like that. It's just life is getting in the way, right? So I don't get... And, and on top, like, right now, there's nothing really that's... Uh, getting my attention. I'm genuinely waiting for GTA 6 and I guess Black Ops 6. I'm intrigued by the game, but I'm not really like firing dopamine. I'm not really impressed or uh, this is something that I said before. It looks good, looks good, but I'm not impressed. I'm not mind blown, mind blown. I hope the game is good. I hope Zombies is good. If Zombies is good, yeah, I want to enjoy that, right? I hope Zombies is fun this time. I hope there's a lot more replay value. They're saying round base, that's good. The zombies crew is coming back. I hope the crew is actually fun to play with as well. I hope the dialogue is there as well, because yeah, like and I hope the story is good too, because that matters. Easter egg's good. I want the Easter egg being good, even though I'm not necessarily an Easter egg player, but I know a lot of people do like it, and I want to at least do it once or twice. I don't want them to make an Easter egg that complicated to the point where then nobody does it. Like, for example, Blood of the Dead, right? Like, in Black Ops 4, they made them so complicated that it's like... You know, you do it a couple of times, you fail, and then you're like, oh, bro, I just want to give up at that point. I feel like their, their eyes on Dracha, uh, uh, Easter egg, but all the way back in Black Ops 3, Zombies was a per perfect, and after that, they made it a lot more complicated, complicated. Don't have to make it super complicated. Make sure the map is fun to play and replayable uh, for high round players uh, as well. And, and, and I hope there's a pausing button too, man, because like back in the days, we had pausing button, man. We had pausing button, and now D Slick is having a hard time at a pausing button in the game. You can, you really can't make this up, bro. Like, holy crap, back in the days, bro, you could pause your zombie game till your PlayStation or Xbox went to console heaven, or till they cut your electricity off because somehow maybe you forgot to pay your electric bill. You know what I'm saying? You know, th those were the only two reasons you could actually uh, get rid of your game. You feel what I'm saying? Or uh, end your game, essentially. But now it's like, yeah, right? Like, all this online crap, right? And apparently we talked about this bull squash. Uh, there's gonna be all this online. And, and, and imagine you're on round 99. You're, like, super excited to get on round 100. Yay, yeah, gotta get to round 100, right? You pause the game. Or maybe you, even if you don't pause the game, even if you're, like, playing the game, you're round 99, somehow your internet connection has a, a have a hiccup, packet loss, maybe. Some, maybe your cat, right, like, uh, jumps on your bottom, right, and be like, okay, let me go, meow, meow, on that sucker out here. All right, pulls your cable. It's over! It is over! Your game is done so! Yeah, it is done so! It is over! So you lost all your progress and the round 99, th that round that you got to, round 99, that progress is done for, okay? Unsaved, it's gone so. So that's uh, something that we talked about and now like, oh shit, my memory's foggier than Snoop Dogg's bathroom, I know that, but it just came back haunting me live as i'm recording this video right so yeah th th this is also true I, I think this is one of those reasons why I, I feel like that when the game comes out and when a lot of people experience these issues a lot of people would be looking like this and if there are enough complaints they might might change it i i hope they do i hope they do but and I don't mean the grind to maximum prestige or to a particular rank. I'm totally fine with that. I don't want people to get bored. Rather, I mean the amount of time required to unlock all of the gear in the game, to get all the weapons, to get all the perks, to get all the attachments, to get the good stuff. Because again, in poor health, it's very difficult for me to put in the time to do that. And these days I'm finding myself much happier with games that have most of the stuff unlocked from the get-go. Or at least one full kit unlocked from the start. If we're talking, I, I need a little bit of grind though. A little bit, a little bit. Not super grindy to the point where it's unfun, but nah, there needs to be grind. I, I, I get it like you're coming from a point uh from the the I, I get it like where you're coming from you're you have disability issues and you don't want to but there are a lot of people that do want the grind because if there's no grind they're not gonna like the game they're not gonna have fun so you gotta think from a, a broader picture here okay uh 
in things like MOBA or hero shooters, I don't want to load into a match feeling woefully underkitted because I didn't have 40 hours to play this week. I don't want to spend a month uh, getting certain attachments on my guns or the last set of perks. And I guess what I'm thinking... Th this I can get behind. Yeah, nobody would want that. About games like this, I'm thinking a little bit more like League of Legends or Overwatch, where you still might have to unlock characters in those games, but you get the full character kit. You get their guns, it's just what they do. Uh, other games have a more limited set of attachments and weapons, and I've enjoyed that better because I don't feel just behind. I don't feel emotionally deflated uh -huh. because I didn't have 80 hours to grind up to get the cool attachment that makes the gun shoot twice or whatever. And the basic idea of being able to jump into Call of Duty and have your full weapon kit pretty much ready to go without having to spend the first three months of the game unlocking everything sounds really nice to me. I know that's terrible for maintaining monthly active users. Those grind walls that developers set up are really good for retaining people, so there's almost no chance I'm going to get that wish. Moving along, I would like for Black Ops 6 to have a medium time to kill, and I'm just, just <clears throat> really basic Call of Duty standard. I don't like fast time to kill because it punishes me for being a boomer and having slow reaction times. I kind of, it just feels bad to instantly die. Uh, now, I wouldn't even say that, uh, that you're a boomer, that's why you don't want faster time. Now, I wouldn't even go that way. I, I would say, like, medium is just better. I don't want it to be like Black Ops 4 though, uh, but I also don't want it to be like super fast, right, either. I think Black Ops 2 was perfect though, I always, I, I feel like Black Ops Cold War was also good, right? Like the the, 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 the time to kill though. Yeah, like, I I'm not sure about Modern Warfare 3, I, I didn't buy, that's the only Call of Duty game that I didn't buy. And slow time to kill feels weird because enemies just feel like bullet sponges, and yeah. the game loses what little sense of realism it had when I have to dump like two mags into somebody for them to die. Uh, long time to kill does reward long-term tracking, precision, accuracy, and just general sort of gunfight dodge strafe mechanics. Uh, fast time to kill typically rewards really fast reaction times. So I feel like medium is the place, and I hope that Treyarch can get that balance just right. I want to have actual gunfights, exchange bullets for my aim to be rewarded, for me to know that I'm better than the other guy, not just a little faster, or I had a gun that was a little bit higher DPS and they had a ton of health. I don't want to dump an entire mag into a guy and only to have him run around the corner and heal up. I don't want to instantly die because I peeked my head out for a split second like it's Counter-Strike and just got popped by a pistol from across the map and the time kills insane or something like that. Uh, I just want the game to have a nice balance, and I think medium time to kill is the way to go with this. It allows me to react, to shoot, to track, to dodge, yeah, to maybe scrape fair, away a little fair. bit, while it's still allowing for picks and uh, relatively quick deaths in Call fair, of Duty fair, fashion. Fair, fair. When it comes to maps in the Black Ops 6 multiplayer... Uh oh uh oh we're hearing we're gonna be getting some remaster maps, though! No, I, I hope we get new maps as well, bro. Like, that's, that's the thing. They said 16 maps, right? And then they said that four of them are gonna be, like, smaller maps for, I believe, uh, 3v3 or some... Like the gunfight maps, I guess, right? And, and and then we're left with 12 maps. I, I we know one of them is gonna be on Nuketown. Nuketown is fine. Remastering Nuketown mil million times that's fine because Nuketown is Black Ops. Black Ops is Nuketown. Just like how Prestige was always Call of Duty, and Call of Duty was always Prestige. Then those suckers removed it. Now they're bringing it back and hyping it up, and everybody goes crazy, right? So yeah, uh, a Nuketown is gonna be there. Then we're left with 11 maps, and what we're also hearing, we're gonna be getting like four remaster maps. Now I'm not sure if those four remaster maps also has Nuketown included, because if it has Nuketown included, then you're left with three maps. You feel what I'm saying, right? Like uh, so, 11 maps, and then minus three of them, we're gonna be getting eight new maps. <laughs> But I don't think that's true. I don't think that's true. I think they're gonna add remaster maps later on. Initially, it's gonna be all. It's initially it's gonna be all new maps. So twelve new maps or eleven new maps plus Nuketown. Uh, that that's fine. That that's fine. And then four other maps as well. I, I want them to make like a lot more smaller maps as well. Actually. I don't feel like I have uh, a lot on the wish list for those because Treyarch has historically done a fantastic job with maps, both in terms of flow and in aesthetics. All I want are the classic Treyarch three lane maps, colorful, they play well, perhaps on top of colorful, it's also important to have enemy characters pop and be distinct from the background, which is a different criticism for a different game I'm reviewing about this time next week when the embargo lifts. Okay. So whatever color and aesthetics we have on the maps, the characters need to stand out from them so that I know okay. what I'm shooting at. Okay. And then lastly in this video, I've got a couple of uh, house cleaning, more administrative type things like lesser skill-based matchmaking. I think the oh, entire yeah. multiplayer experience could probably do without skill-based matchmaking because right now X Defiant is literally crushing it and the lack of skill matching is its biggest selling point. 
I feel that at the very least, Activision would be wise to loosen skill-based matchmaking and not as prevalent or get rid of skill-based matchmaking, bro, or lessen it, right? Or have like a boot uh, boot camp. They used to always have boot camp in back in the days. Have a boot camp playlist with skill-based matchmaking, and then once you reach certain rank after that, the actual multiplayer don't have boot camp. Guys, check out this video on the screen. This is what's going on in gaming, okay? Recently, this was uh, what happened. We ended up getting some new updates about Dr. Disrespect as well. Uh, check out this video. If you've already seen it, then check out the video on the left.